All right, welcome everyone to the 7.30 class. And in this class, again, we're going to continue to talk about the Olympiad, round number four. Which happened today. It was a very, very big matchup today. USA versus India. India is very strong this year, this Olympia, because they have Vishy Anand playing for the team after 12 year absence. So he is definitely the strength, but unfortunately he is the one who lost today against Fabiano Caruana from St. Louis, US top player, US number one, who is gonna play in the beginning of November for the World Championship match against Magnus Carlsen. So this is a big game. A lot of people were watching this and probably world champion was also keeping a close eye on it to see how his opponent will do. So Fabiano opened up with d4. Knight f6, c4, e6, and he played the move g3, the Catalan, okay? This is the Catalan, okay? So you have to uh, know this idea. And he's been playing this, been experimenting with this. He, I haven't seen him play before, but this year he's been doing this. Catalan had some successes. So d5, bishop g2. Normally you have the knight on f3 here, but this is playable. So the point here, he wants to keep the knight on g1. Knight check, queen takes, a6. Okay. And now, so I want to give you a chance here. Oh, how many of you saw this game? Like, do you remember the move he played here? The move he played here. You do, okay, let's don't, don't say the move yet. I wanna see if who can uh, find, or maybe even guess the Fabiano's move. Because I was like, first when I saw this move, I was, is this really, really? And then of course I clicked on a database to see how many times this move was played and there was no games found. <laughs> so that immediately tell me that this was a novelty. A powerful novelty, you know, that doesn't look like anything, but it worked out great for him here. So again, don't raise your hand if you've seen the game, okay? So let's let the others to, to try to see. What did Fabiano Caruana play here to surprise five-time world champion? It's, it was pretty shocking when I saw it. Ashish, e4, it's not a shocking move. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a normal move. I mean, it might not be a great move, but it's, it's a decent move. Huh. Okay, Caleb. Bishop e3. Look at that move. Good job, Caleb. I mean, you, you saw the game probably, but okay. Look at that move, guys. We are told not to put a bishop on that square usually, right? That is blockading the pawn. Well, this is the modern chess, you know. You sit in front of the computer long enough, you're going to come up with ideas. Or if you have a you know, good team, you, they're going to bring you some ideas like this. What's the idea behind the To stop c5. It's very simple. Stopping c5. If you play the c5 now, he's going to say, Thank you. Thank you very much. For the pawn. And you're not getting the pawn back here. Excuse me? No, 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 no. He's, just, he's not planning to move the bishop. You're just planning to keep it there for now. Stop c5. Stop c5. Well, just can you wait a little bit? Yeah, we'll get to that point. <laughs> okay, so bishop e3. And I was curious because I didn't watch the game live, so I watched afterwards. I was like, I was curious how much time Anand spent here because obviously when you encounter with a move like this, this is a little bit of a shock. So he spent about close to five minutes here already. Which for Anand is a lot. For Anand is a lot. I mean, he's one of the, the best prepared guy. I mean, he has a fantastic memory and he can remember things and he knows so much. Surprise. Never been played before this move. A novelty, we call that. So, okay, Anand spends about five minutes. He said, okay, let me just develop the bishop. Now, queen drops back to c2. So there is no b5 tempos or anything. Now he castles. And now comes 
the next surprise of the game. I give you another five guesses to find the next move. Knight h3. Ah, very good. Knight h3. How? <laughs> That's interesting. You guys think about knight h3, though. Okay, I guess the other moves are more normal. Yeah, knight h3. Putting the knight on the rim, but he's trying to go to f4. What he's trying to do, he's trying to keep the light square bishop diagonal open. Okay. Oh, now I checked again. He spent about seven minutes now here. So. So he's out of prep. Uh, of course, you after bishop e3, of course you're just completely out of prep. I mean, who who would? It's very. You gotta be like. <laughs> you really think about this. So probably glancing. I think that what happened was they were glancing through the position and the computer on a high depth was throwing this move bishop e3. And whenever you see an unusual move like this, he's like, is this really going to work? Because most of the time people don't think about moves like this. And then, you know, he started to analyze or, you know, his trainer. And then they realized this, this works. And it's, it's, it's something you would do for one game. I don't think you would see people repeat this move. I mean, this, this is just, it's more like a surprise factor effect, you know? It's Play like the big role. No, I don't think so. <laughs> this is, I don't think you're playing a move like this in a world championship, you know? I mean, uh, so, but let's take a look. Bishop d6, queen c2, knight h3, e5. Since c5 doesn't work, Anand wants to do something. Actually, e5 maybe wasn't the best. There was a, Suggestion maybe to play with a knight, computer like knight d5 here. So, e5. Just castles. So you got an awkward looking bishop on e3, awkward knight on h3, but computer showing white is slightly better. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, yeah. It's like you play two moves that just, they don't look logical at all, and they shouldn't work according to all the principles, but with the current technology and the strong computers, it's just so dynamic that it just, and it's very hard for Black because he's, he, 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 he thinks he hasn't done anything wrong, and his opponent is playing quickly all these moves, and lots of pressure now on Anand. So h6 is played, controlling the g5 square, and stopping some knight g5 ideas maybe later on. And now, takes only five. Knight e5, knight c3. Developing. Queen e7 played. Rook ad1, normal move. Rook e8, knight f4. Now the knight is getting ready to jump in on d5, create some pressure. So c6 is played, preventing that. Now, what do you think, what do you think uh, Fabiano played here? What is the plan in this position for White to try to prove he has, he has an advantage? Michael? Knight? Knight a4? I don't even want to go there, but... Maybe like, oh, he, he didn't play knight a4. Um, maybe I can start to play like knight g4, you know? Hitting your bishop, Michael. And then I have some even g5 ideas, kicking the knight and pick up only two. Some ideas, okay? But you have to, you have to try to have a plan and you have to understand where you should play here, where your strength is here. So I have a question for you. Where is the strength here, on the queen side for white or on the king side? side? And there is a very simple way to determine that. If you think, if you know how to think about that, you very quickly realize. King side. King side. Why is king side? Well, you can see that lots, of lots of pieces and that's what I wanted to hear. Pawn majority. Don't always think about the majority on the queen side. We have a such thing called as a king side majority as well. Okay, don't forget that. Four on three you have on there. You got four pawns versus three. And that is a, 
swing side majority. You're not going to push everything, but you can try to expand to get the control of the center, okay? That is a king side majority, okay? Now, so, but first things first, which piece needs to be improved here? Very clearly, this piece shouldn't be here. Ashish? Aha, uh -huh, bishop. If the bishop was only three, how are you going to expand? You're never going to be able to push your e pawn, right? So what do you need to do first? Bishop? Perfect. Now, Anand probably got, you know, a little bit frustrated with this position. It's unusual, and, you know, he cannot develop the bishop here. So he decided to take a chance. But it was a very risky move. G5. A move that I would be quite hesitant to play, you know? It's certainly a weakening move, but he wanted to get his bishop into the game. So that's the reason, you know. Actually, computer thing, it's not a bad move. It's just, it's a little bit on a risky side, okay? But it's not easy to move. You don't have a good move how to, where, how or where to develop your bishop. So g5, knight d3, played by Fabiano, takes. And now, how are you gonna capture back? Question is. Ashish? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like you're certain about your move. You're well, I heard that Adi. <laughs> Caleb. Queen takes. I'm not sure. Um, Ken. I'm looking at rook takes and then bringing my rook to f3. Something on that third rank, okay? Lateral, yeah? You want to take with the rook to have options, okay? And don't you worry about bishop f5 because you have e4 ideas, okay? Well, actually, so he played bishop e5 first to trade the strong bishop. The bishop on d4 is very strong. Now... Another great move here, played by Fabiano. Rook e3 can, I think it just, uh, I have queen c7. Well, actually, I also have knight g4. Adi. Hmm. You want to prepare the f4 break, okay? Because the pawn on g5 is a target. But for that, you need to improve one of your pieces. Ken? And you just play like Caruana. Excellent. Very nice. <laughs> Good job, Ken. Thank you. Bishop f5. Now, attacking the rook. Absolutely. Bishop g6. Now, Anand wants to play rook ad8, and after he manages to do that, he should be okay, yeah? But tempo, white has the tempo here, and he's going to use it. F4, excellent, Mike. And here, Anand makes the blunder. It's like actually, yeah, it's basically a move that lost him the game. For a moment, I'm going to flip the boards, and you are playing with black here. You are in Anand situation here. Is still equal? White is still, okay, if black plays correctly, he is very slightly worse. But after the move in the game, he's pretty much lost. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to understand why, but he just gets made it or he loses material. But I will show you the lines. You're, playing to, you're trying to play the best move, so, for black. That's why I flipped the board, so you're on the black side here. What is the best move or the best, and the best continuation here? Ashish. This is correct, but your second move is not correct. Queen takes c5, b4, I mean. 
C5, rook D6. Rook A, D8. Excellent. That is the correct move. Your rook is stuck on A8. You need to bring this piece into the game, okay? So he probably didn't like this because of uh, E5 here. But, you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not so clear. Knight H5 and things are a little bit loose here. Black, so let's say take, queen e3, capture, capture some rook d3 ideas you have, okay? And black is getting some activity. Uh, what is your question? When? You can, but when you... Okay, I'll go here, this pawn is a little bit hanging. Giving me this great square, huh? Yeah. Well, f6. I take. No, I think it was something like this. Computer was showing. Black is doing doing okay, you know? Very slightly worse. So rook a d8 was the move. Anand said, let me take here first. And when he takes, he was going to take, take, and play rook a d8. But sometimes there's little details, you know? Once you miss this little detail, now it's losing. Because of which idea? Which, huh? Which idea he overlooked here? Or maybe underestimated how strong this is. Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes bishop, correct? Sorry, I flipped the board back. Queen takes, and now gf, and now suddenly, you got a rook coming to g3, you got f5 coming as well. And queen h6, you know? All the pieces are perfectly placed. He goes queen c5 check, king h1. It's likely that he was counting on maybe taking the pawn on e4. Because this rook is still remaining out of the game. And now f5, f5 is very strong, f5, rook g3, and queen h6. So, and if he plays here, that's what he played, sorry, takes. He took with the rook. If he takes with the bishop, why is this losing? Hashish. Think. Caleb. Absolutely. Queen g2 check. Look at that. Check. Oh, picking up the rook. And picking up that rook, okay? Picking up that rook. Excellent. He's been doing his tactics. So, so he played rook takes c4. And now, very nice move by Fabiano. Of course, not taking bishop before check and black, white king is in trouble. Very nice move. Huh? No. Do you want to trade the rook that is not in the game? Adi. You know, this piece is not in the game. Why do you want to trade him? Might be good again, but... What's the square for this rook, guys? Of course, rook g3. Now, you're threatening to simply play f5 and then queen h6 comes in. f5 is a huge threat, so not much Alan can do, so he played here. And after the next move, he resigned because he cannot stop against the threat of f5. So what is the move that is gonna, what is that is gonna force the resignation? Queen f2. Queen c1, trade. Why are you trading queens? You have a mating attack. Oh. You want to keep the queens, Michael. You have to tie up the pieces. Tie up black's pieces. Well, which one looks more active? Of course e3, because you want to play f5 and queen h6. Ashish. It's not even a question about that, okay? You control the file, you're pinning this, and you're threatening to play f5. So that's, this is very, very strong, okay? And winning the game. Yeah, because for, with the queen f2, it takes away taking the uh, h4. Yeah. And now, look at five. Yeah, yeah. So here he resigned, actually. 
because there's no way to avoid lose, losing a piece here. Um, so king h7, f5, which is suggested by Ashish. Rook takes f5. If you take with a queen, I take. It's important to note that after the check, there's queen g1 move. That's a very important move, OK? Um, and if I go rook d1 check, you just simply go back rook f1. And now the queen is under attack. And white is up a piece. This should be a win. All right? So that's why after queen e3, he resigned. I mean, at this point, computer was showing about two and a half pawn advantage for Caruana. So in Caruana won, in the second board, we had Wesley Slow drew comfortably as block against Hare Krishna. Board three, Hikara Nakamura was very slightly better draw against Vidit. And board four was a relatively quick draw. Sashi Kiran was white against Shanklan, but he didn't get anything, so it was a Berlin. So US is doing really well. No, Carlson actually not playing. He declined to play and is preparing for the match against Caruana. He's just watching all Caruana's games. <laughs> yeah, he's... Is playing. For yes, he is. Armenia is doing quite well. They won all their matches as well. Let's focus now, guys. Black to play and win. So Black is a very strong grandmaster, Laznitska from Czech Republic. How did Grandmaster Lasnička break through here and win? Black has the advantage. He has very active pieces. And black to play and win, yes. Active knight, strong pawn on d4. But how to break? Break and win. Well, yeah. you have to have you have to have a good follow up. Yeah. It's a hard one, so you have to calculate quite a few moves here. First, you have to try to see ideas. What ideas are out there? Okay. Can. Rook e to d6. And if I play, you mean this move? Mm -hmm. But if I pin, you can? Oh, I can't move my knight now, can I? Yeah. Caleb. Knight f2, king h2, king h2. Excellent by Caleb. Sacrificing the knight. That was the sacrifice I was talking about. I know, but did you see the follow up? Rook yeah. over. Yeah, rook over, then he escapes. So the point is, what Caleb is doing, he's trying to go to here to control the escape square. Uh, and now threatening check here, OK? There are a lot of lines, though, Caleb. Did you calculate everything? No. All right, so first of all, this one. How you win? Yeah. Check. Now, if he goes here, you just take. Take, check, you win the rook. And if he goes here, check, take, take, pin it to win it. And if he goes backwards, take, take, check, winning the rook. So, that's, that's the line if he goes king e2. Now, let's take a look at the uh, queen f3 defense. But that way I'm stopping you from playing the move rook f6. Rook e3, excellent. Now, queen f5. Rook d2, e8. Threatening rook e2 check. And this seems to be winning because if he plays rook d2, what do you have? King g3 and rook e1. And rook e1. Takes, check. 
winning the queen, look f1. Okay, good. So that's with queen f3. So now, what are you doing after queen f5? Yeah. This is a much tougher, much tougher move to deal with. Please think, Asis. Think, okay? There are ideas. Rook, rook h1 is an idea for white. So you have to do things very quick and important. You have to do it strong. All right, what's the idea here? Michael. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, but maybe I go rook d2. What is the idea, guys? You need to bring more f pieces into the game, okay? No, more pieces you need to bring actively. Caleb? D3, D3 interesting. Threatening a little rookie two check at some point, right? And also using the idea pass pounds, meant to be pushed. pushed. Now you're threatening check and taking the pawn here. Excellent. By the way, he can play a few things here. So he can start with knight c3, but that loses to a fantastic move here. Bringing more forces into the attack here. Neil. Powerful. Powerful play, yes. And you're threatening to play rook f4, okay? Mating. Perfect. So he plays rook takes d3. Now this is losing, how? Rook takes d3, queen takes d3. Huh? Rook f6 check. King e3. Queen e5 check. Checking this guy and winning the rook. Absolutely. And that's the solution, okay? So, a lot of lines, but at the end you win. So you have to come up with the idea to sacrifice on f2, then takes back, you have queen h7. Yeah, queen h7 was the new idea. Sorry, queen h2 move. Yeah. So that's the very, yeah, activating the queen and stopping. Okay. Okay. White to play and win. This is the game Mamedyarov versus Ponomaryov. Mamedyarov, Ponomaryov. If you know, anybody know this game or no? You've seen it before. Okay, then don't say it. If you've seen it, that's good. It's a rapid game, by the way. Take your time. <laughs> Well, pick up pawn doesn't mean you're gonna win here. So you have to win a piece. Ashish. Mm, bishop takes e4. King e5. Then I go rook d1, maybe some chances, yeah. Huh? Okay. Okay. It's a bit unexpected idea, but it's very nice. Neat idea. You are winning a hint for you. You're winning a piece. The three move combination. My call. Bishop d7. Adi. Guys, you la don't allow bishop d7 because then he blocks you. What are you going to do first? d7, of course. Push. Now he takes. 
What's but you say take, eh? Oh, that yeah. was incorrect. Oh, yeah. oh this was a king c4 then. King e7, draw. Bishop a4. Bishop a4, Michael, yes. Check. King cannot come up because you take, so he has to go here. Oh, rook b7. Rook oh. b7. And look at the important job yeah. the bishop doing here. Yeah. Covering the d1 square. So Mamediaro wins the piece nice. and the game as well. Panamariov. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's do this again. Very direct approach, this one. Check, takes, check. And you win the game. Got it? All right. Excellent job, guys. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you next time.